Hey, how you doing, man? Good, man. Appreciate you making time. I know you got a lot to get through with the new tour, and congratulations announcing America in the Morning with AFI and Anti-Flag. That is going to be nuts, man. Yeah, it's, we're really, really excited about it. It's, uh, it's a tour that we've been trying to ha- make happen for a really long time, and you know, schedules have finally permitted, and you know that's a that's a thing, that's a tough thing. You know, yeah, absolutely. Trying to get everyone's schedule to work together, three different bands, and not just that, but the guys in the band trying to get together and work their schedules, and then three separate bands as well. Absolutely. So it's tough, but you know, our last tour last summer with Deftones, we had such a good, you know, and Thrice was such a good deal, and we really needed to kind of up the ante a bit. And for us, it'll be the last tour for this record cycle for this record. We have out Wolves. Right. So we really wanted to kind of go out with a bang. So we're really excited. Well, we're very excited about the album Wolves, but before we get into any of that, I just want to ask you real quickly as a guy from Austin, how scary were the last couple of weeks there? It was horrifying. I mean, I, I gotta be quite honest with you, you know, um, the last few incidents, the FedEx that he dropped those packages yeah. off at, uh, um, was down, I mean, two blocks away from my house. No kidding. The kidding. last, yeah, the incendiary, incendiary device that they found at a Goodwill, which if they first thought might not have been connected, which was connected, that was down the street from my house. It was all, I live in South Austin, and so all of that was South Austin. And so there was a period until that morning when, you know, the the craziness happened and sure. he decided to, I'm not going to say blow himself up. I think that's a very convenient thing to say. I, I you know, as he was, he was a suicide bomber. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> he, was trying to take, he was trying to take people out. And I don't know why the nomenclature lately has been, he blew himself up when, if he was, in my opinion, a different color, he would have been a suicide bomber. But anyway, um, that's my own political. Story. That's the great thing about the country, right? And it should be that we should exactly. all be allowed to express our opinions. I agree. Um, and so until that happened, um, it was horrifying around here, man. You know, this is a real sleepy little place. I right. Mean, it's a music community. Everybody here, it's like this little sort of easygoing place in the middle of Texas, which can be a volatile state. Um, we've seen politically for sure. I love it here. And that happening here was – that's never happened here. Nothing like that. I mean, outside of the Charles Whitman Whitman maneuver in the 50s where – a man went on top of the, the UT Tower and started, right. you know, sniper rifling, rifling people. Um, things like that don't happen here. So, and it happened so close to my house. It was just, you know, it was it was insane. So, but imagine a little crazy and still confusing. You know, everybody's still kind of wondering what was happening. What was the deal? Is there still more devices somewhere? You know, it's all, it's still unsettling. Well, and especially when it's happening around South by Southwest, you don't know if it's someone coming into town. You don't know if it's a local, especially something that is meant to be an escape and a chance for everyone to get together under the umbrella of creation and music and art. And yet you have someone being so selfish and taking. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, that was had to have been carefully planned to be that way. You know what I mean? Um, Try to take out as many people as you can. You know, it's it was weird because so much of it seemed so meticulously planned, and then at the end of it, it almost seemed like he was he was trying to get captured. More and more frantic as it went on, it seemed to be. Because I mean, I tell you right now, every, there was no getting away from it. I mean, really anywhere, but here especially, you know, it was all anyone was talking about. There's no way he wasn't, you know, uh, I mean, completely frantic. Yeah. <laughs> you know? with the environment that was here. Man, I really respect you for sharing that with us. You can only get that from someone who was firsthand in Austin. Zach Blair from Rise Against, of course, coming out of Austin. That's how we got there. Rise Against, from the start, though, had a deeper political moral lyrics than a lot of other bands when they started in 99. Did that attract you to the band when you first started playing with them over 10 years ago? (sighs) Yeah, it did. Before I joined Rise Against, you know, there was a brief... I had a band when I was a kid called Haxish that ended up doing pretty well and touring through the, the 90s. And and then we broke up, and I realized, well, this is what I did. This is all I did. So I I would have accepted playing in other people's bands, you know, to be a professional musician and to keep doing it. And it was only a select few that, that I could have seen myself ever playing with. And I remember when Rise Against started, I was like, that's a band I could see myself doing. I had met them through Friends of Friends. And I liked the fact that there was no image there was no 
you know, thing like that. They spoke their mind. They reminded me of all the classic punk rock bands that I used to listen to and or had still listen to. Sure. That just wore their influences on their shirt sleeves, weren't trying to be anything more than what they were, weren't trying to wear, you know, it's, you know whatever, the get-ups and all that stuff, right. which is fine if that's what you're into. Um, they seemed like a band that was going to last, that was going to stick around, that was going to have a career. They seemed, they reminded me of a young bad religion at the time. Absolutely. And, right, and, and I thought Tim's voice was amazing, and I'd go see him live, and I was like, man, I want to be in that band, and, I was in a band called Only Crime with Bill Stevenson, who ended up, you know, he's our the Rise Against producer and sort of fifth member. And uh, we toured with Rise Against. And the, the alliance sort of started then. That was like in like 2003 or five, or I can't remember. And, uh, and yeah, and it just sort of worked out that way. And so uh, I did respect them for what they believed in and, you know, their convictions before I had joined, absolutely. Well, now that the band is quickly approaching a 20th anniversary, does it mean something different to you as a musician than it does as a fan of the band? Absolutely. You know, because I've been in the band over half the career. Right. So the band's been together 18 years. I've been in the band 11 years. So it's hard not to definitely feel, you know, such an allegiance. I'm still, I guess you could say, the new guy. But so much <laughs> has happened in my in my tenure um, that it's hard to not feel a personal sort of um, victory with, with everything that's happened. It's, it's growing increasingly difficult every day just to stay afloat as a band playing right. guitars and playing rock, loud rock guitar music, as I'm sure you, you know. Yeah, man. There's an eight-second attention span with, with kids nowadays, with people nowadays. You, right. It's so hard to compete anything artistically with what is on your phone. And especially playing loud rock guitar music. You know, I, I, I surmised it a few different ways, and one of the ways is, like, I, sometimes I feel like I'm, you know, in the Benny Goodman Orchestra in the 50s, and Elvis was just on TV, and you're just going, oh, crap. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I see the future coming. Right, right, right. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not bummed about that. I'm not being an old curmudgeonly man about that. I think, bring it on. That's the snake eating its tail. You know, that's 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 how we reinvent ourselves as a culture and, sure. and, and culturally move on. You know, we are trying to compete with a short attention span. We are trying to compete with bands that might have a guitar on that stage, but you definitely don't hear that guitar. You know? Right, right, right. And and it's and it's 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 interesting. It just kind of keeps us on our toes. Well, you, know? you have bands like Muse, and you have Matt Bellamy out there giving interviews and saying it's the death of the electric guitar as a lead instrument. Now, if you know your music history, obviously it's lasted a lot longer as a lead interest, uh, instrument than a lot of people feel. But you know, going on tour with the bands like AFI and Anti Flag and Rise Against, I think the electric guitar is alive and well and not going anywhere. Well, fingers crossed, man. I mean, you know, I, I have to agree with him to a certain extent because, you know, the analogy is if you have, if you're a kid and you go into Guitar Center and you have the choice of buying something that can take you months to learn how to play, or getting a thing out of a box and plugging it in and immediately playing a song. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You read the owner's manual and you know how to do it, and you can get this thing out of your head and out of your heart immediately. Well, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? With the attention span, it being it's where it is. But by the way, again. I think this is all a good thing. I really do, even being a guy that makes a living playing guitar, because it just makes challenges, and that's okay. You know, I champion it. You know, it, I think it should it should reinvent itself. You know, it should continue on. You know. Well, you talk about challenges, and real quick before I let you go, Zach, being on tour, doing it with AFI, Anti Fly again, Morning in America. Are you still living the straight edge vegetarian lifestyle? And if so, does it make it harder when you're on the road? Um, I don't drink, smoke, nor do drugs. I am a vegetarian. Um, no, it's not harder on the road. I, I, it was harder 20 years ago. Right. There weren't options. You know, now every place you go into has a great vegetarian option. It's not a vegan option. Um, as far as the drugs and drink, I just never did it. You know, and I didn't do it before I knew there was even a thing called straight edge. I never identified as that when I was younger until I figured out that there was a, a movement in this crazy punk rock music I was listening to called straight edge. And then it was like, oh, I identified with it. But now I'm a 44-year-old man, you know? Right, <laughs> I mean, right, I just, right. I just never, I just never took it up, you know? And at a point, it got to the point where it was like, what, am I going to start now? Right. You know what I mean? Um, and... I just never had a use for it. I never wanted to sort of escape. I always was kind of into 
where I was. And plus, I have a really quick, crazy mind that um, I never wanted to dole that, you know, and, and to each his own. I'm not going to preach against somebody wanting to do that or wanting to escape. I don't know their life. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. I came from a house where my parents did a lot of everything, and my brother and I just made the decision early on as a response to that, like, oh, okay, we don't want to act that way. We don't want to do that. So it was a real ignorant sort of sort of um, innocent thing at first. Like, we just don't want to do that. Right. And that led into a sort of a lifestyle. And then, you know, of course, discovering straight edge and realizing that we did identify with this, this sort of group of people. But, you know, going forward, it was just something we never ended up, you know, a lot of people, everyone we knew back then started at one point, like, ah, let's start drinking. Let's start. We just never did. Right. You know, and three fourths of our band are the same way, which is hard to find in adults. It yeah. really is. It's not a requirement, but it's, you know. I'm sure that it helps when you're on the road as well. I mean, at 44, you kind of have your mind made up that nah, I'm not going to be going down that road, but it's always good to have your brothers on your side just saying, hey, we're all in this together. Sure, absolutely. Well, absolutely. appreciate it. Zach Blair, lead guitarist of Rise Against Again on tour. Morning in America, AFI and Anti-Flag, and you can download, or I recommend going out and get a physical copy of Wolves, the latest album from Rise Against. Dude, get people to stop downloading music and go out and get an album or a CD or cassette or something. Get it in their hands. I agree with you. Appreciate it, Zach. Have a great day, man. Take care, buddy.